Hi, welcome to MEND, I'm Julie. Today on MEND we have part two of Sergeant Wayne Sneed's story. And I just believe that if we had somebody like Sergeant Sneed in every classroom, he could really change the way we all view mental health. Somebody who takes care of our children, our teachers, and our parents, just like Wayne does on a daily basis. So go and check out Wayne's story and just know that Wayne is somebody who's changing lives one story at a time. Uh, currently, I am employed with the Austin uh, Independent School District Police Department. Uh, and we work, uh, I am the sergeant over the uh, crisis intervention team, which is the mental health team. Mm -hmm. uh, I like crisis intervention uh, over mental health because mental health has such a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. I want to first thank you for your service for all of these years. The work that you've done is just, you've just helped so many people. and uh, and opening up about your story yeah. you know um, not only with your peers but now with these teenagers and parents and yeah. um, I know it wasn't easy what you went through by any means uh, but the fact that you were able to start opening up about it and then helping other people is you know it's, it's something special well I always feel like we all have a story mm -hmm. right everyone has a story and it's like the more we can understand and open up about that story. Mm -hmm. Austin ISD is the sixth largest school district in the state of Texas. Right now, I think we're about 70, between 70 and 80,000 students. Mm -hmm. We have 130 campuses, over 230 square miles of the city. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly large, it's a city within a city. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, unfortunately, our schools in our neighbor are set in our neighborhoods mm -hmm. and those schools obviously are not you know prisons so things happen in and around our schools that impact our schools and so you know not only are we dealing with mental health internally mm -hmm. as you drive down the streets of Austin you can see that there's mental health and mental illness that uh, plagues our city but the more we can get resources to those individuals to help them deal with the things that they're dealing with, the better it's going to be. Um, one of my job and my team's job is to help parents uh, or family members sometimes uh, because the kids with mental illness grow up to be our adults with mental illness. Right. So, you know, as much as we don't like to think of it, that's really how life works out. And so uh, is trying to be a resource to help those individuals that may be experiencing that crisis uh, to get through it. It could be a death of an employee on the campus that the kids are impacted by. Unfortunately, for years, my first six years working here, we lost at least one student, on the average about four students a year, to suicide. And so, you know, those things are very impactful. It's impactful for the family, it's impactful for the campus and the staff. Anxiety is the number one uh, mental illness in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, more people suffer with anxiety. And it could be social anxiety, it could be mm -hmm. testing anxiety, it could be, mm -hmm. you know, speaking in front of groups. You know, some mm -hmm. people have a hard time standing up in front of a group, mm -hmm. even in college, doing a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. you know, I had all of the above since I was very little. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to be noticed. I mean, I always was struggling with anxiety since Correct. I was very little. Right. In fact, this is the first time I've ever been in front of cameras. Right. It's doing this. Well. Because it's debilitating. It's very debilitating. And if you um, aren't aware and, and you aren't educated, then you don't know what to do with it. And definitely back then, you know, people yeah. didn't oh, understand yeah. it. The stigma is real, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's, it's a reality, whether we accept it or we don't, uh, whether it's a stigma of handling stress, we mm -hmm. talked about in mm -hmm. law enforcement or, you know, uh, first responders in general, uh, or it's the stress of how, how is someone going to look at my child differently mm -hmm. if I tell them that they're going to get counseling mm -hmm. or that they've been diagnosed with a particular disorder. So there's a lot of reluctancy mm -hmm. amongst parents to acknowledge their child. And I always use this and as a general rule, and I said, okay, let me ask you a question. Given what you know and the dangers that your child is exhibiting, mm -hmm. the behaviors that they're exhibiting, 
um, if we were talking about their heart or their lungs, you know, or their liver, would you not be insisting that your child get help immediately? Mm-hmm. That EMS come to the campus right now and pick your child up? And they, they said, and they all stop for a minute and they think about it. And I said, but because we're talking about the brain and the brain controls everything in our body. So without mental health, there is no physical health will deteriorate. Right, exactly. I know. Right? And so until we acknowledge the importance of mental health, we are always going to be working in the negative. I believe that we as human beings, we're, we're, we're built for perseverance. Mm-hmm. Right? We're survivors. Mm-hmm. You know, we will find ways to survive through whatever we encounter. Some of those ways are healthy. Mm-hmm. Some are very unhealthy. Right. And no matter what we go through tragically in our lives. And I always say, you know, everyone walks around with a bucket. It's an invisible bucket. Mm -hmm. And some of the buckets have big rocks in them. Some of them have a lot of little rocks in them. But if we don't feel we don't figure out a way to empty that bucket in a healthy way, it becomes, as you pointed out for yourself, at some point in time, our bucket runneth over. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, and I tell this to officers all the time when I do trainings with them, smiling on the outside doesn't mean happy on the inside, Mm -hmm. right? And that can be very confusing to people when they see someone that's, you know, it's always smiling, always happy. It doesn't mean that they're not going through things. It's just they've chosen to handle that situation by trying to be positive and still being who they fundamentally are. Uh, inside, mm-hmm. right? If you're a fundamentally happy person, you want to always be happy. So mm-hmm. you're always wanting to project that because that's truly who you are. But it doesn't mean you're not dealing with controversy, either internal or external, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And okay. so that can become very confusing to people when they see it and they go, you know, I can't believe so and so committed suicide. They were the most happy go lucky person I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, their bucket runneth over. Mm-hmm. Right, and there was no way, or they did not feel there was any way to empty those rocks out of that bucket, and it gets to be so heavy that you can no longer carry it. Mm-hmm. And so, that's where I'm always cautious when I see changes in behavior. Uh, I was in one of the darkest days I've ever been in, mm-hmm. and started thinking about uh, ways to end my life. Never to a point of having a plan, but definitely contemplating would I, would life be better off. Would people be better off if I wasn't here? Mm. My ex-wife at the time, or actually we were just separated. She called me one night during that three-week period that I was at home mm-hmm. with no one, no friends around. And she said, I need you to be here, because she was pregnant, to help me raise our child. Mm. I don't know what I said that indicated to her that I was in a dark place, or maybe she just picked up on mm-hmm. my tone and mm-hmm. the cues uh, surrounding that tone mm-hmm. that I was having a difficult time. Mm-hmm. Never been back there since that day, mm-hmm. uh, and that was 31 years ago, but it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, that one person? That one, that one person, that one call, mm-hmm. and all she said was, I need you to be here to help me. And that powerful. took me on a totally different path. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I have now been an advocate mm-hmm. for people going through traumatic events. Mm-hmm. And if we could get our society, or mm-hmm. our country, to look at how our actions, behaviors impact other people, I think that mm-hmm. would go a long way yeah. in changing some of the concerns that we've talked about here today. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's no reason to worry about stigmas because you're going to get support, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, people are going to be here to serve you and, and to support you. And so I just wonder, like, what are your tools? Um, what do you do daily to keep up with your mental health? Or if it's not daily, what do you, what do you strive for? Uh, well, I grew up um, in, in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, 
prayer is a very important part uh, of my day, appreciating the fact that I have another day to go out and help others. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel I've been blessed in that, in that way to have that servant heart. But going back to what you said, self-care is really important, mm -hmm. right? We, we talk about it all the time. Uh, the, our mental health professionals talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I always use it similar to the analogy they have on the airplane, mm -hmm. you know, put your mask on first mm -hmm. and then help others. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that every day we need to put our mask on first. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean mask in the sense of the way we're wearing them uh, right. uh, or have, have had to wear them, but mm -hmm. basically taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. whatever that routine is, meditation, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is that you use, prayer, mm -hmm. um, being able to write. Mm -hmm. Some people like to go journal in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, some people want to go for a walk. Some people want to go for a run. Some people just need their coffee, mm -hmm. right? And that gets them started. So whatever that routine is, it gets them started off on a positive mm -hmm. foot. That's the most important thing. And it's how we deal with our stress and what coping skills, what self-care things we put in place mm -hmm. determines how successful we are uh, in getting through that. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it's not going to be difficult, but, you know, I just believe God never gives us more than we can actually shoulder. Sometimes it feels that way. Mm -hmm. That bucket feels like it runneth over. Mm -hmm. uh, in reality, you know, it's just us taking rocks out. Um, but it's still heavy. Yeah, it still is very heavy so. well, when it happens. Yeah. I don't know about you, but um, not that I want to relive those dark days, but I, I don't want to forget them because yeah. it, um, it's what drives me to talk about this Correct. and to help, you know, these young children, um, people in their 20s, right. 30s, 40s, 50s, right. 60s. And, Absolutely. You know, I always say this mental health does not discriminate in any shape or fashion. And putting myself back in that spot just really humbles me. Yes. And, and, and in some strange ways, I'm, I'm really thankful for it. Yeah. Reflection, I think, is always good. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, you know, reflect on where you've been and how you got to where you are, but don't dwell on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I like that. Uh, because it, it really keeps us, as you said, it keeps us focused when we can we know. Plus, it is, it's a positive thing. This is where I was, and that was then, and this is now. Yeah. And to show that, hey, I've made a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe not as much as I would like to make, but it's still progress. Yeah. Right? And there's still hopefully many more days to come to continue that progression. Are there uh, just things that you can suggest that if they're going through a hard time, if it's the students or parents, what they can do for their children? Are there a few things that you suggest? Um, I think that being able to find someone uh, for parents. Mm -hmm maintaining good communication with your child. I know that when they get into those adolescent and pre-adolescent years, mm -hmm. it becomes more difficult. Um, spending more family time uh, away from electronics, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, being able to surrender your phone, but also have the kids surrender their phone, have dinner together, uh, have movie nights mm -hmm. where you're disconnected for a while because one of the biggest uh, challenges that I've seen are kids are so connected. Um, every completed suicide that I've ever worked involving a child, another child knew that the person was about to kill himself. But the adults did not. Oh, wow. So if it's no more than talking to our kids about tough things that are going to go on in their life and they're going to be your friends that you're going to be there having that servant heart mm -hmm. right when your friends going through something being able to come to me mm -hmm. letting me help you navigate mm -hmm. how to help them stay safe but we've also had students that have to live with the burden of being the last person who knew that that person was on that dark path mm -hmm. and that burden is something that we don't want any of our children to go through mm -hmm. so uh, I think the more that we can look out for each other, uh, regardless of our age, uh, we can help look out for each other, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what I would say is going to turn the tables and 
bring more awareness to the things that are going on and mm. before they become tragedies. Yeah, I love that. I always think too, it's just taking that one minute, you know, one minute to call a, a hotline or one minute to call yes. a friend, or one minute to call whoever. To call and if or to call a therapist. Yep. And if you don't know of one, just yeah. there online that you can zoom and there's just so many resources now and it may seem overwhelming because things like that seemed overwhelming when I was in it, but now the more I simplify what I'm doing and I think, Okay, I can do this for a minute. Right. I can I can call a friend real quick and I can even just step out my door yeah. because if I step out for a minute, then I'll keep walking for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so, just all there's so many resources. They're hard to pinpoint every single one of them. But I think what you um, just said is just so true. Just be plugged in. Be plugged yeah. in to your children, to your friends, to your family members. You know. Yeah. And and when you see a change, mm -hmm. when you see something, say mm -hmm. something. That's right. So. You know, if you're, if you think, you know, oh, that person's going to be fine, even though they're dealing with a lot, mm -hmm. I would say assume they're not. Yeah. Think the opposite. Yeah. And, and I, some people have said, so what do you say to someone who's going through that? And I would say to them, I just want you to know I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to solve their problems. No. You don't have to give them solutions. Just let them know that you're there for them, and they can call you at any time that they need you. Um, that goes a long way. Oh, it does. It goes a long way. And maybe not having any suggestions or anything just for them, just to be there. Just to be there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really yeah. important. I love that. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. get out, take a walk. Let's 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 go get grab coffee. You know, mm -hmm. just getting out, and eventually they will get to a point where they want to talk mm -hmm. about it. Wayne, I just this interview has been really powerful in so many areas your personal story you know thank you for sharing that and uh, what you do once again just thank you and the students and families and people that you're helping right now are um, just so lucky to have you i want to thank sergeant wayne sneed for joining us and for sharing with us about his life the work he's doing now and his service as a police officer because not only has Sergeant Wayne Sneed been saving lives in the police force, he's also been saving lives as being a mental health advocate. So thank you, Sergeant Wayne Sneed.